Hi, my name is Paul Barshlan, and I've got a special presentation for kids to learn how to do Islamic art. This has been put together by the Islamic Art Society of Houston, and we hope that you'll enjoy learning how to create these wonderful patterns. You might wonder, what is Islamic pattern? Maybe you've seen some beautiful designs in mosques, or maybe your parents have a lovely Quran that has a really nice cover, or some of the carpet pages, or some of the uh, individual surahs will have decorations in the beginning. As you start looking around, you'll see that there's certain characteristics of Islamic art, and as amazing and complicated as it is, the basics are actually really simple to learn. So I'm going to teach you how to do that right now. Let's start by looking at some examples of my work. This is a ceramic platter about 16 inches across. It weighed 25 pounds of clay when I threw it on the wheel. It's all one single line that weaves in and out to create the entire pattern. This is part of the miracle of Islamic geometry that you can create all of these amazing patterns and use sometimes just a single line to go in and out. This pattern introduces some curved lines. Uh, it uses two different lines to create the pattern. And I've done the outlining in actual gold, which gives it a beautiful sort of glowing effect. This pattern uses a set of very complicated tiles from Iran called Gira tiling uh, that use five-fold symmetry to create amazing shapes. Beautiful art form, very highly developed. This is one of my tile patterns. The inside green star is in 12, and then the edge stars in turquoise are in 9. When we put multiple tiles together, the pattern starts to come out, and we see that we can fill an infinite amount of space with the same pattern repeating over and over. You'll see lots of mosques and palaces decorated like this throughout the Islamic world. This pattern is in both 12 and 14. Sometimes I like to play with unusual combinations of numbers because it creates different and exciting patterns. So to do this first part of the workshop, you're going to need to download and print out this PDF file that we have on the website. This divides the circle into 12 for you already. Later in the lesson, I'll show you how to divide the circle into 12 yourself, but if you're younger, uh, I recommend starting out with this one because it's a lot easier to work with. This file is also on the website, and it shows you how to divide the circle. I recommend trying this one if you're in at least 7th grade. If you're younger than that, it might be a little too difficult for you, so you might want to just stick with the earlier PDF that we did, and then you can try this later with your parents if you want. So part of the magic of Islamic geometry is once you have a circle that's divided into 12, there's all sorts of beautiful patterns that you can create inside of that. All we have to do is draw lines between any two numbers, but it's very important that we do it in order, okay? So when you do this, um, what I want you to do is always hold your ruler with your left hand, or if you're left-handed, you can reverse these directions, but spread out your fingers like this. So don't be like this, spread it out wide like this. Hold your ruler in your left hand and draw on the right hand side of the line, okay? And that'll keep your ruler from moving around and give you nice straight lines, which is really important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect every fourth point along the circle. So when I say every fourth point, this is what I mean. I'll put my finger on one and I'll call that zero. I'll go one, two, three, four. So that's from one to five. You can also think one plus four equals five, okay? Now it is important that when you do this, you do it in order. So we started with one, so next we'll start with two, and then we'll start with three, start with four, etc. If we go from five now to somewhere else, it's easy to get confused, so I recommend always do it in order. One, two, three, four. So we did one to five, so our next two numbers are going to be two plus four, which equals six, so two to six, like this. And if you think about it, what are our next two numbers? Well, we started with 1, and next we did 2, so next we're going to have to start with 3, and we'll just add uh, 4 to it, and that is 7. So 3 to 4 is 7, and I'll go ahead and line up there, draw a nice straight line in there, and next is going to be 4 to 8, and you'll notice that my arm is kind of having to twist a little. I can get 4 to 8 in just barely, but after that it starts to get a little too hard for me to do what I was talking about, right? So very simple solution right in front of you, just turn your piece of paper. You don't have to twist your arm all to a crazy angle, just turn the piece of paper. Okay, so we had 4 to 8, and we started from 4, so next we'll start from 5. And you don't even need to count, just the last one we ended at, you go one more, okay? So I'll go from here. And doing it without counting, I started here, so next I'll just start at the next point along the circle, which is here, and I ended here, so I'll just end at the next point along the circle here. So I'm going to do this all the way around in order, 
and you'll see that it creates a really interesting pattern. So 7 to 11, 8 to 12, And here's where we run into problems, right? If we were trying to do 9 plus 4, it would be 13. There isn't a 13, but there is 1, which is, again, just 1 past 12. So the math doesn't matter so much. What matters is doing it in order, right? So we did 9, and next is 10, and we ended on 1, and next is 2. So 10 to 2 are the next two numbers, and we don't have to worry so much about the math, which is good, because I don't actually like math. Um, I'm not very good at it. Even though I do geometry, it's a special kind of visual geometry, which is a lot easier to do, and that's part of why I love it. And now we'll do 12 to 4 here. And that completes it. So that's our first Islamic star pattern that we create inside of the circle. And that's created by drawing, uh, connecting every fourth point along the circle. Now what's really amazingly cool about this is that there are all sorts of different patterns that can be created just by using this simple technique. So, let me turn this around. Take a look here. This is the same pattern that we just did, okay? So this is made by uh, connecting every fourth point along the circle. Well, it turns out if, that if I'd chosen a different number, for example, every fifth point along the circle, I'd get a totally different pattern, okay? So just by changing the number, you get a different pattern, which is part of what makes this really fun to do. And then the really cool thing is that you can actually do combinations of these. So for example, I can go like this, which creates a really complicated pattern on the inside, or I could even turn uh, like this, so that now I've actually got 24 points and I'm creating a pattern uh, on top of that. So just by dividing up the circle within given lines, you can create all sorts of magical things. We can also do cool things like here. This is a combination of lines. I did every second and third, and then from the inside circle, I did every second and third on the inside of that as well. This one's really interesting. I uh, started out in 12, but somehow I've ended up with five-sided stars. How does that happen? It's kind of magic. You'll also note that 5 times 12 is 60, which is the number of minutes in the hour, and that 12 is our division for the clock. Uh, so it's very interesting that these numbers play out. It's because when people first started measuring space and time with a compass, the very first thing they came up with was the division from 6 and from there into 12. So that's why so many things in our culture are based on 12. And and I'll do another cool version here. Combining these two, right, I can rotate and create all sorts of interesting patterns inside of these. Or take this blue one, put it on top here. So this is just like the tip of the iceberg. Um, once you've got the division into 12, there's an infinity of patterns that you can do. And if all of that wasn't enough cool stuff to be able to do with one pattern, there's even more. Check this out. Okay, so we made our division, right? Um, but we'll notice that on the inside here, we see all these points on the inside as well, right? We've made a new shape on the inside. If we drew a circle around it, it would actually be another circle that's already divided into 12. Um, but we don't need to draw the circle because all we need are the points. So every time these lines cross on the inside, I want you to make a little dot right there, okay? So see how there's a triangle here, the smallest triangle on the inside? Just at the base, so ignore that point, but just at the base of the triangle, go ahead and make a little dot. And let's do this all the way around. You should end up with 12 new dots. Okay, and now if you like math and um, you want to number them, you can. You can go one, two, three. You can make little tiny numbers all the way around. However, like I said, I don't really like math, so I don't do it that way. I'm going to do it a much easier way. Um, so all you have to do is just line your ruler up. Okay, we did every fourth, so this time I'm going to do every fifth. So I'll start here, call it zero, and go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line from here. And next, all I have to do is just rotate it visually. So I can actually just turn the piece of paper. The next point is right there, and here's the next point along the line. So we'll go here, and again, I can just keep rotating. Notice that I'm always holding the ruler on the left, right, and drawing on the right, or reverse it if you're left-handed. So we'll do this all the way around, and I create the pattern for every fifth inside of the one for every fourth. 
and you know this is going along really well and you're thinking oh this isn't so hard and I've got it figured out and you're doing really well and then your brother or your sister says something and you turn and you look up at them and then you come back to your page and you're like oh no where am I I have no idea where I'm supposed to go next don't panic very easy to find your way back all you have to do is put your finger on a point remember we'll call that zero go one two three four five so I'll line up from here and I'm back on track now. So I just did that point. Again, I just rotate. These are the next two points. So I'll do that all the way around. And you'll know you're done when you line up to points that you have already completed. Now one thing that can go wrong when you're doing this is if you're connecting every fifth point, but then you make a mistake and you start connecting every fourth or every sixth point along there, then you'll end up with more lines than you're supposed to have, um, and that's a little confusing. So if that happens, um, I recommend just starting over, um, unless you've only messed up one or two lines and you can figure out which ones they are. <clears throat> okay, so here's the pattern for every fifth inside the pattern for every fourth, so it makes a really cool design there. Let's take a look at some possible ways that we can color some of these patterns. So here's one. This is a nice example. Um, so I started out at just as we did, right? I connected every fourth point to get one to five. And then on the inside of that, I made another drawing here. This time I did every fourth point on the inside of that pattern to create a new design in there. Let's see what happened here. Um, so here, I connected every third point, which is one to four. So if you look, you can actually see that there's a bunch of squares here, actually. So this pattern is made out of three squares. And again, three times four is 12. So we're back to our magic number there again, because we've divided into 12. From there, let's look at this internal circle and see what we did. From here, that's zero. So one, two, three, four. So that's every fourth point on the inside, okay? So I did every third point on the outside and then every fourth point on the inside. Here's an example of doing something more complicated. Um, this is in interlace, which is something that we see all throughout Islamic pattern, these beautiful lines that weave in and out. Unfortunately, that's a little more complicated than I have enough time to show you today. Um, but if you want to start working with some of these patterns, you'll learn uh, different ways to do it. And there's lots of tutorials and lessons online, many of them available for free, um, that you can learn how to do some of this stuff. Here's another example of a pattern. Um, so playing with all sorts of different options here and creating different shapes and how you color them can help you bring out different shapes. So that's part of the fun and part of the magic of doing this. So now that you can divide into 12, um, there's all these different patterns that you can create from there. So if you're a younger kid and this is a little bit difficult for you, I recommend just printing out uh, the PDF that we have on the website and you can have as many circles already divided into 12 as you want and do as many different color patterns as you want. You can color them with markers, you can color them with colored pencil, whatever you want to do. If you're a little bit older, there's another technique you can use to learn how to divide the pattern for yourself, divide the circle into 12. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Everybody's welcome to try it. My experience has been that kids um, around fifth grade or so, um, it's pretty difficult for them to work with the compass. Maybe some kids can do it if they have a parent or an older sibling to help them, or maybe some kids are really good with their hands and they'll be able to do it. But what I don't want you to do is to get frustrated. So go ahead and try it. But if you need help, just ask your parents. And if it's too hard and you just want to color, just print out the PDF that I have on the website and you don't have to worry about it. But if you're in sixth or seventh grade or older, why don't you go ahead and try to divide the circle into 12 with me. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So if you want to try dividing the circle into 12 yourself, you're going to need a compass. There's lots of different kinds, but I recommend what's called a spring bow compass, which is a kind that has a little dial here. Uh, these are about $15, not super expensive. If you have a really cheap plastic one, sometimes those don't hold the shape very well, but uh, you can try it with that and see where you get. Um, and if it doesn't work too well, you might want to consider getting a better compass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my compass now. And uh, it's great if you can get 11 by 17 paper. Um, if you can't, you can do it on 8.5 by 11, it's okay. If you have 11 by 17, I want you to adjust the radius, which is the distance between these two points, between the metal point and the pencil, to 3 inches on your compass, okay? And make yourself a nice big circle in the middle of the piece of paper. If you're on 8.5 by 11, instead you can do it at 2.5 inches, will work very well. From here, pick the compass up. 
put the metal point anywhere on the edge, not here that's outside, not here that's inside, it has to be on the line itself. It can be anywhere on the line, here or here or here, doesn't matter, but it needs to be on the line. Then make a little mark right here, and then keep this metal point in and flip the compass over and just make a little mark here. So we have two lines that cross the circle. Now pick your compass up, take the metal point, go exactly where the line crosses. Not here at the end of this line, that's not right, and not here, that's outside the circle, exactly where it crosses. And again, make a little mark here, keep this point here, flip the compass around, mark here. Watch what happens as I do the next one. When I mark backwards, I form a little X on the edge of the circle. So that lets me know exactly the point that I want. When I go forward, I make a new mark. I'm going to come back to here. I mark back and I get my X. I mark forward. And look what happens when we get to the last one. As we mark back, we get an X. But as we mark forward, we line up exactly where we started. So the circle divides itself into six. This is part of the magic of geometry. The radius of the circle, the distance between the point and the edge, divides the circle into six itself. So that gets us into six. To get to 12, we're going to need to go halfway between these two points. So I make a mark in space above here, and then I pick the compass up, come over to this side, mark over here, and I make an X that sits above the circle. Let me show you what happens when a lot of kids try to do it. They'll say they want to go between these two points. They'll go here, they'll make a mark here, go here, make a mark here. They'll be like, what is that guy talking about? Those lines don't cross. Okay, the problem is where you drew them. We know we want to find the middle point, so that's somewhere along here. So you have to pretend you see a line that goes roughly around here. So that's kind of where my mark needs to be. And I made a mark over here. It has nowhere near my finger. But you'll notice if I continue the line to about where my finger is, and do the same on the other side, these lines actually do cross. They were just in the wrong place. So doing these two, right, I'm going to go here. It's going to be somewhere around here, so that's where I'll make my mark. Come back to here, and there we go. And if your marks ever don't quite cross, like here I'll miss intentionally, oh, they don't cross. No problem. Just go back to the point make it longer, now they do cross, okay? So we'll do that all the way around. And if you come up to this and your line goes off the edge of the paper, you can actually just make your compass a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the compass smaller here. Just need to be more than halfway. So this is roughly halfway. So I'm going to make my finger just a, a, a little bit in there, and I'll make the compass just a little bit bigger than halfway. And now I'm going to mark here, and again come to this point and mark back. What that does is it moves the X closer to the edge of the circle. So you'll see I can actually do that same thing up here. It doesn't matter where they are. So that X is closer to the circle than this one, but they both share in common that they're identifying the point we want. So if I put my ruler on there and line up through there, I can see that they both fall on the same point. So I'm going to go through the center and through the X and make a little mark. I'll do the same on the bottom here. I'm going to do that in all the orientations. So here's the X, here's the X. I line up through, okay? And make sure you're going through where the lines cross, right? You don't want to be here like that's the end of that line, and here the end of that line. That's not right. You need to be going through the points of the X's, right? That's the axis, okay? And we're going to do the same over here. And now all we have to do is number our points. So this is 1, the x is 2, this is 3, the next x is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And now you have a circle divided into 12, and you can play with it and create all sorts of magic and wonderful patterns. You can find lots more of examples of uh, different patterns on my website at barcelonceramics.com. Feel free to visit to see some of the things that I've been up to. If you want a good basic introduction to how to do some of these patterns, I recommend this simple book by Eric Brugge, Islamic Geometric Patterns. And if you're really excited about Islamic Pattern, there's a wonderful series of online classes available from artofislamicpattern.com. They're not necessarily designed for children, but uh, some of you who are a little older will find that you are able to do them. 
Thanks for joining the Islamic Art Society as we did this fun virtual workshop. I hope you had a great time, and I hope it sparks an interest in Islamic geometric design, because once you start drawing and creating these patterns, there's no limit to the wonderful things you can create. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.